Man, um, last night, my oldest daughter Riley comes home and after the, the volleyball game of my uh, youngest daughter, Sarah, which they won and they're like number one in, in the county for eighth grade middle school. But anyway, Riley comes home and says, hey, I, I want to watch this documentary about, it's called Three Strangers. Okay, cool. We'll, we'll watch it. Well, it's on Hulu, and apparently right now, the only way you watch it on, is on Hulu. So, we, my suggestion, everybody should watch it. Everybody should watch this documentary. It is mind-blowing. And just get, just get Hulu for just a trial run. If you don't have Hulu already. Or if you don't like Hulu, or if you have other streaming service, whatever, just get Hulu for this purpose. Just do a 30-day trial run. You can cancel it, but you got to watch this documentary. Anyway, it's about these three brothers. They were triplets. And they were separated at birth. And they were given, okay, let me go rewind, okay. They were given up to adoption to this agency called Ann Rice or something like that. The agency doesn't exist anymore, but anyway, it was back in the 60s. They was given up for adoption. And they were split and adopted by three different types of families. One was a white collar family who the dad was a doctor and the mother was like a lawyer or something like that or worked for a lawyer or something. And then brother number two was adopted by a um, middle-class guy. He was a, a former military. Uh, he worked a lot. He was, I say he was kind of strict, but he wasn't, none of the parents were abusive. Let's just get this straight. And they never mentioned anything about the parents being abusive. But he was this, the brother number two's uh, adopted parents, the, the dad was very, very strict. He was former military. Um, I don't remember what exactly they said he did for a employment or the mom. But then brother number three was adopted by a blue collar guy, a family. He, um, the dad owned a, a deli or, a, or a, like a little small grocery store or something, something like that. I don't, something like that. And, you know, they were... Not bad, but, you know, they they wasn't, you know, he, back in them days, you know, he probably, you know, had a lot of expenses, da-da-da. So he's blue collar. All right. Now, they end up finding each other. The brother number one, brother number two. Brother number one went to college. And then this guy who was friends with brother number two said, hey, you, what are you doing here? And he's like, what do you mean? Hey, your name is Eddie. No, no, my name's not Eddie. It's Bobby or something like that. I swear to God, you look like this guy, my fr best friend from, from home, uh, Eddie. So they call. He said, well, I got to meet this guy. So they, they go to a pay phone and they call Eddie. And the friend of brother number two goes, man, you've got to meet this guy. He looks just like you. He's like, what? And then, the, so, they end up talking on the phone when he was born, same, you know, day, blah, blah, blah. What adoption did they see? They knew that, they, all three brothers knew they were adopted. Um, so, the brother number one 
was talking to brother number two on the phone and he said brother number one says it sounded like i was talking to myself so they ended up hanging on the phone they jumped in the car they drive two hours where brother number two was at and then they meet and it's like looking in the mirror and then it was an instant connection well it gets put out on the newspaper and then now here comes big old story about it and then here comes brother number three <laughs> A friend of his is like, hey, have you seen the newspaper? And he's like, no, what do you mean? So he shows them the picture in the newspaper. He's like, oh, my God. So then the mom and brother number three is like, you see this? Yeah, 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 blah, blah, blah. So then he ended up calling these uh, paper place. Brother number three meets. So it was like all three of them in an instant connection. They, they have... They were very similar. They had they smoked the same cigarettes. They were 19 years old when they met. They smoked the same cigarettes. They dressed the same. They had the same particular, uh, like this particular style of women. Uh, they both had like curly hair. I mean, it was like there were subtle differences in the three, but you, you could tell they were like freaking identical. Anyway, they ended up hooking up and um, all that stuff and well then they they go and they and then the parents uh, the adoptive parents of brother the brothers they find out about you know they meet everybody and they see how well they they go they meet the other parents and they're like they start talking and like they're really upset because they didn't know that they were triplets and they were upset at the adoption the adoption adoption agency for breaking them up. So they went to the adoption agency, and the adoption agency was like, "Well, we kept it from you, but we wanted anyway. You know, we didn't want you to know, and da da da. It was it was like an experiment. And they're like, what? And then the one guy, the guy that was, uh, I think there were, there were Jew, the boys were Jewish. And I want to say all three of the other families were Jewish as well. Cause I think it was majorly a Jewish adoption agency, but brother number three parents, the, uh, the guy that owned the, um, the store or something. Everybody hung out at his house because he was the fun-loving dad. He, they called him, they gave him a, it was a Jewish name, Yiddish, Yiddy or something, Bo Booba or something like that. I can't remember what they called him. But everybody, all the boys hung out at his house. Now, that goes, goes back and starts talking about the families. And but all three families, the adopted family said, you know, if we would have known that there were three brothers at the time of we adopted these, we would have adopted all three of them. But the purpose of the adoption agency was to separate them because it was part of an experiment. They come to find out it was a part of a, an, a, an experiment to put uh, twins or triplets in different households and monitor them to see if hereditary will take over or nurturing would, would mold on how they would be growing up. And it goes talking about how they would, there were these people that would come when the boys were younger and they would video them and they would document everything that they did. And they told the parents, it was just, they was just seeing how adopted kids react in a family home. But in all in all, it was how do these twins react to different scenarios growing up because like i said one was a, a white collar one was a middle class and one was a blue collar and then it goes talking about their uh the family history of the bio the bio family so the boys go and they start 
asking the agency to find, they want to know who their biological mother is and biological father. Well, they found their biological mother and they met her at a bar and the guy said, he said, well, here we are, 19, 20 years old and we can, you know, we can drink and hang out and, and drink like a fish and then our biological mom was sitting over there and she's hanging with us and it was like, whoa, was, you know, it, he didn't say that he didn't, the words come out of that she was like a drunk or whatever, but he kind of insinuated that. But she never, I don't think she ever had any more kids. She told him it was a one night stand, like a prom night or something like that. She don't even remember who the guy was. And uh, that was that, you know. And it, didn't really go any further on talking about it. if they, he said, you know, they kind of left it at that. You know, they were satisfied on, you know, their families and blah, blah, blah. So, back to the point of these kids were strategic, strategically placed in these different families. Now, not only were these triplets put in these different families, they were strategically given or the, they had an older sister that was adopted as well. Now the sisters, they didn't say them. I don't think they said anything about them being biological sisters. They were just, just random girls. But all three brothers had three adopted sisters about the same age from the same adoption agency. So back to the mother, now they come to find out they did his, the history of the mother, she had uh, mental illness. And the government okay it's hard to keep up. Now, back to the, uh, the to the adoption agency. Now, the adoption agency was funded by the United States government. It was funded by friends of the United States government. Also, there was a guy, I can't remember the name of the doctor. He was a psychologist. He was funded by the United States government to conduct this study on how to twins or triplets react to growing up in different households is there is the is way they grow up going to affect the way they are or is it going to be hurt now back to the point of the mom had mental illness that was the whole purpose they were looking for Parents that have mental uh, signs of mental illness to see that if they were put in different situations growing up, would it affect the mental illness? And in other words, would it be more hereditary that would affect them, or would the nurturing affect them, and they wouldn't have very dark or deep signs of mental illness. Well, not only were these three brothers done like this, there were several several twins because there was another set of twins. There was two girls that was done the same way. Same adoptions, AC, same thing. It's just, there it was just two girls, not the, the, the triplets. Um, and it also said that they, one of them, had, both of them had issues with mental illness. The boys even had men, um, issues with mental illness. They had they had uh, talked to psychiatrists and stuff like that. So that when they were younger, when they were like six months old, when they first got adopted and they were separated from their brothers, they would go through signs of uh, banging their head on the wall. All three of them did it. Because it was like separation anxiety. Because they were separated from you know, their brother.
anyway, fast forward to toward the end. Well, the brother that grew up in, okay, they end up, all three of brothers end up marrying, um, I know they go into detail about brother number two that grew up in the strict home. He ends up marrying. They interview the wives of the three guys too. So, I mean, it's not just the brothers. They interview the wives. Uh, they interview the strict dad. Now the, uh, the fun loving uh, dad that owned the, um, deli or restaurant or whatever he died i think the mom died they interviewed the aunt now i didn't say that it didn't say if the aunt was the brother's sister or the mother's sister it didn't say it just an aunt and then they interviewed uh another sister of the Doctor dad, I think. Because the both of the, his parents, his daughter's parents have passed away of brother number one. Um, now, I did say that brother number one that had the doctor and the a lawyer mom, the, um, the doctor was, the doctor dad was not hardly ever home, but when he was home, he gave all his attention to his kids. He worked a lot of hours, um, but when he was not working, he was very involved with the son and the daughter. Brother number two that had the strict parent, he was involved, but like I said, he was very, very strict. And I don't, he, it, it, like I said, didn't say anything about neither, you know, him being abusive or whatever. And I didn't get that vibe from anything that was said. But the government basically did this test, did this psychological test on these twins, on these boys. From, and everything was strategically done. They did, a, they even, as far as did a study on the adopted parents making sure that they were going to be the right fit for this study they did a uh, a you know uh, observation of the biological mom making sure she everything fit for this study and like i said never said anything she don't even the biological mom don't even know who the biological dad is and it makes me wonder if he wasn't also paid for this situation as well. Maybe he was paid to strategically be placed. You know, I wouldn't put a pass that he was in, he was in, uh, injected with something. And I may be going off the deep end and conspiracy theory, but I don't care. I don't, I don't care because I don't put anything past the government now. He was so that they would have twins or or, or triplets or whatever for this particular study because it never said anything about the biological dad and the biological mom don't even know who the hell he was. Don't even remember. Everything was just strategically planned from the mom, biological mom, biological father, the adopted parents, the adopted sisters, everything now come to find out later in the show that brother number two like i said all three of them are the brothers and even the the twin the twin girls that it was that happened to them too had cases of mental illness now, the three brothers end up getting, buying a restaurant, and it was called, the, it was called Triplets. Well, 
they ended up having a falling out. One of them had a falling out with the other two, and he left the business. So then it was brother number two and brother number three, which Bobby was the Bobby was brother number one. Brother number two was uh, God, what was it? Eddie. And brother number three is David. Now Eddie and David stayed and they kept, they was working at, you know, trying to keep the, the restaurant going, blah, blah, blah. Well, brother number two, Eddie, you know, committed suicide. And it's just, the whole movie's sad. I mean, the whole documentary's sad. It's just sad that these guys were put through this and it goes to, to tell talk about how even though they had a lot of similarities and everybody was looking at their similarities there was a lot of differences because of the way they grew up and they, they even interview they found one of the Psychologists, uh, uh, they actually found two of the psychologists' assistants is still alive. The psychologist is not, but one of them was a woman, and she, she tries to play it off like she really didn't know what was going on, and. You know, and and it's another thing they end up talking about. The study that the psychologist done was never released. The test was never released. The, all the files, all the videos, everything on every twin that he studied during that time frame, they put in like a uh, a locked room, a sealed room at the University of, of Yale, and it was never released. And even the the twin boys went through all kind of hoops to even get some of the documentation just on them on all the, the studying and the paperwork and the, and the videos just on them but it goes to say that it never really says anything it just just you know Basically, the majority of the study was... I think the real root of the information that the guy was studying probably either died with him or was put somewhere else and or maybe even not even shown to the boys. Because they at first they told them no. That they wasn't going to unlock the files and the studies. And that one guy, uh, the one brother, Dave, David, brother number three, Dave, yeah. He's like he could. I mean, you see him on the on the documentary calling, you know, University of Yale, saying, "Hey, I am part of that study. One of them videos is about me and my brothers. Can we at least see the ones that was done about us? I mean, I don't really particularly care about the other twins, but can I see the one of the, or at least the one about me?" And after a couple of back and forth or whatever, um. They finally released it, but it never released, never really said much, and it's it just a bunch of hoopla. I got, I bet you most, either the real root of it, all the information about who was involved and everything was probably kept away from them. They was not exposed to it. But my point is, the government was the one funding it. The government did this, and just like. I was listening to a podcast a while back about the whole um, Tuskegee, Tuskegee thing. The um, test was done on, on the black men in Tuskegee with syphilis, all government funded, all government done. And, and oh, and it goes, it goes to talk about how once the adopted parents found out about the three brothers being brothers and talked to the agency 
And what they did, they tried to make a lawsuit against them on what they did to these kids. Well, they found a, a lawyer or whatever to to start the the thing, the whatever process I guess you say. And then after like a couple of weeks, the lawyer called them like, "Oh, look, we we can't do this case." And they're like, "Why?" Because it's like a conflict of interest because we have people in our adoption in our uh, law firm or whatever that are using that adoption agency and it doesn't, they don't want to mess up their chances. And they're like, and nobody, no law, they tried other, I think they said they tried other law firms, nobody would take the case. Because, like I said, it was government funded and the government was like putting up, putting the brakes on them. But it's just, it's just sad. It, it goes to show you what all are. I mean, I, the United States government has done, and what we don't know about. What what don't we know about? You know what evil do we not? I, I'm not trying to bash the government I'm not you know I, I love the United States but I don't like this government secret bullshit this government test these like the Tuskegee airmen I mean not Tuskegee I mean the Tuskegee guys on the syphilis thing these twins hell what else hey, what was this a study COVID AIDS what else was a study 